This machine here is a pug mill. This is what I use to mix and chop the clay. I place the clay in the top of the auger, pull the arm down. This forces the clay through the tube, which then mixes it, chops it, and when it comes out the other end, it's ready to use. I'm taking these strips of clay and I'm tearing pieces off. Each one of these balls needs to be around 240 grams. So I'm just weighing it in the scales. The theory is that if I make all the balls of clay the same size, then hopefully all the pots will be the same size. I then form the clay into a ball, which then makes it much easier to use on the potter's wheel. The clay that I'm using today, um, we buy it all in from a supplier in Stoke-on-Trent. I'm going to take the balls of clay that we've uh, prepared previously. I throw this down into the centre of the wheel and then just pull it to the middle. The clay's wet and my hands are wet. Then I squeeze the clay, then use the thumb to push down into the centre of the pot and to make a well. Once we have this hole, we then push the thumb outwards to create a bigger hole. Next, we go on to the first lift, which involves me putting my thumb on the outside of the pot, my fingers on the inside of the pot, and then squeezing the clay between the two and pushing upwards. This um, heightens the wall of the pots just by squeezing them upwards pressure. Now I do the second lift which again is squeezing the clay between the fingers on the inside and the outside of the pot, pushing upwards. At this stage you should have got all the height that I require for these small beakers. I then take my rib, which is made from metal but was originally made from animal ribs, hence the name. I use this to just tidy the bottom of the pot up and to create a small foot ring. I just form a little ridge at the bottom of the pot, which is its little foot ring. And then I use the tool to smooth the surface of the pot. I'm just squeezing the clay against it just to make it nice and neat and even. And when that's done, I then use just the sharp corner of this rib to create a spiral on the outside of the pot, which is just part of the decoration. Next, I need to remove the water from the inside of the pot. Part of the decoration of these pots is me just running my finger up the inside in four places, which just squares the pot off and creates a different design. I then use a piece of fishing line to cut the pot off the wheel. Dry my hands a little and then they should be able to cleanly lift the pot from the wheel. These are the pots that I made previously. I'm just going to wipe the bases of them to clean off any sharp edges and then I'm going to stamp them with my little marker. Just wipe around the bottom with a wet sponge, press the stamp in, check the pot's still the shape I want it to be and then I place them upside down to dry. This first firing we call the biscuit firing. So I'm just going to place all the pots inside. Now I'm going to glaze the pots. So that's what I've got in these buckets here. It's just a mixture of different, basically rocks, ground down, which when melted in the kiln form a silica um, based glaze. So just stir the glaze until it's thoroughly mixed. Then I dip the pots with a pair of tongs into the glaze. The pots here have already been fired once. So they're at what we call biscuit stage. So they'll soak the glaze up really quickly. The pots now will all be dipped again, but only sort of an inch around the top. This just intensifies the colour there a little. When I put this glaze on, you do get dribbles and runs, which you can see on the pots. This isn't a problem with this glaze, because the final result is quite drippy and the surface is quite varied. So now I just need to wipe the glaze off the bottoms of the pots. Because if I leave any glaze stuck on the bottom, the pot will then, as the glaze melts, the pot will then stick to the shelf in the kiln.
Once the glaze has dried onto the surface of the pot, they went, we then place them into the kiln. In the kiln, the glaze ingredients melt to create the glaze finish. These pots are stoneware pots, which means they're fired at a very high temperature. These ones will be going up to 1260 centigrade. So now I'm going to close the lid. So the pots have been in the kiln now for about 24 hours. It's taken about 14 hours for the kiln to slowly heat up to temperature and it's cooled down. So now the temperature's got low enough, we can open the lid and hopefully we'll have a nice shiny pots. As you can see, the colour of these pots has changed drastically. As the ingredients have melted, it's now given it this nice shiny glaze finish and a completely different colour. This glaze I actually call autumn because it's got so many different shades in it, you can't describe it as blue, green or brown.